cyberspace, the final frontier. Who would be brave enough to go there and come back? It's Scooby-Doo and the gang, who's ahead of the pack with eight video titles in the top 100 children's video titles for the year 2001. Zoinks! Zoinks! Scooby's video sales overall increased 46% from 1999 to 2000. 20 million videos have been sold to date, with 6 million units sold during the year 2000. And Scooby had 5% share of the kids' video market in 2000. It's amazing what you can find on the web. And they're back in Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, an all-new movie featuring all the action and excitement of a computer game in theatrical quality animation. Imagine a computer game starring all of us. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase is coming October 9th to video cassette and DVD. But first, can you show us your new video game? While pursuing a ghostly computer virus, Scooby and the gang get zapped into a computer game based on their own adventures. It looks like we've been beamed into Eric's computer game. The computer game sends the gang to 10 different levels, some back in time, and others to amazing places. So where are we now? And the fun is just beginning as the Scooby theme song is sung by Scooby's pals, Cindy, Kate, and Fred of the B-52s. Scooby, 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 this DVD also includes demos of Scooby-Doo's CD-ROM games. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase will be creating cyber excitement everywhere, starting October 9th, 2001. Priced at just $13.95 for the video cassette and $19.95 for the DVD. And there's more. There's only one thing I love more than playing games. Warner Home Video is promoting this release with a multi-million dollar TV, print, radio, and online campaign. It's pretty cool. And Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase is backed by electrifying national promotions, generating one billion consumer impressions. Wendy's will distribute 11 million Scooby Kids Meal toys, and every kids meal will include a $2 coupon toward purchase of this title. There's a lot to like in Cyber World. Warner Home Video and Equity Toys are teaming up too with Snack Attack Scooby. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase will be promoted on every toy package and on over a million dollars worth of Snack Attack Scooby TV spots. Saputo Cheeseheads will be creating an instant win game featuring Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase as a prize. The Cyber Chase video will be featured on 6 million Saputo Cheese packages, as well as in the national FSI, with a circulation of 40 million and all in-store advertising. Pressman Toys will be releasing a Scooby-Doo Snack in Action game, with the Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase video included in their national TV campaign. The Learning Company will be supporting this release, too, on packaging on their new CD-ROM game, which will include the Cyber Chase trailer, wallpaper, and other electronic goodies. So count on Scooby for high-voltage appeal. Today, Scooby is more popular than ever, and this pooch packs powerful TV ratings, reaching over 7 million kids and over 6 million adults weekly. All right, Scoob! Best of all, the release of this title is timed just right. October 2001 will be Scooby-Doo Month on Cartoon Network, with tons of on-air promotion, including a 24-hour Scooby-Doo marathon on Halloween. That's fantastic. And Scooby-Doo is still top dog with consumer. Cool! Overall, consumer purchase intent has exploded up 35% since 1997. Oh boy. Scooby's overall Q score jumped more than 20% from 1999 to 2000 and ranks as the third highest cartoon, comic, or book character. In cyberspace, no one can hear you scream, but everyone can hear you laugh. <laughs> so make sure this techno action adventure is part of your plans, too. Everybody make a run for the video arcade. Order now and create a cyber event in your store with merchandisers and posters like these. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. We're adding some new bite to this top dog. Thanks, Scooby. You're welcome. <laughs> Order date, August 28th. Street date, October 9th. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! Now, a behind-the-scenes look at Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Scooby-Doo and the gang get downloaded into cyberspace in an all-new adventure. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Why, check it out! <laughs> We're digital! <gasps> we dropped in on a Scooby-Doo voiceover session with the actors to find out how the gang got zapped into a computer game in their new movie. But first, let me introduce you 
to the home team. I play the role of Daphne. She's kind of the cute one of the gang. In Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, uh, the gang gets back together to go visit an old uh, college friend who's become a video game designer. This is a hyper-energy laser. We've been using it to break down actual objects and project them into cyberspace. And he makes a Scooby-Doo video game, and they're all excited because it's modeled after them and they're all in it. But then the real gang becomes part of the game in cyberspace and can't get out. Your friends have been transported into cyberspace. What? <laughs> Good work, guys. Frank Welker is the voice of Freddy. In this particular adventure, uh, which we're all kind of excited about because it's very today. It has to do with computer games and computer viruses and how we get involved with chasing the virus, almost the same as like playing a video game. Christ, virus! Scott Innes is the voice of Scooby-Doo and Shaggy. It's not easy playing two characters. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's like a lot of levels in this video game, and every time they get to the level, they think, okay, like well, the game's over, we've won, now let's go home. Welcome to level two game players, where things get a little tougher. The object of the game is just to find the Scooby snack at each level, and each level it just gets more and more difficult to do that. When they find a Scooby snack, they're able to move on to a more difficult level and eventually win the game and go home. So where are we now? And I think we're into like three or four or five levels before the whole thing, but before everything goes like crazy, bum bonkers, like speaking of lunch, we didn't even get to keep the Scooby snacks from the moon level. Come on, guys. Cyberspace is only one destination for Scooby-Doo and the gang. Some levels send the gang to amazing places, and some levels send them back in time. Friends, Romans, and spooky gladiators, all hail Emperor Scooby! We all know about those bugs and those, those, the, oh, can I say the V word? Viruses. Stop that dog. In Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, <gasps> I play the Phantom Virus, which is sort of a, um, a computer-generated virus that's it's in a game, but because the game has a way of snatching things from reality and bringing them into the game, my character sort of gets out into reality. Like a computer virus with a real mean streak and a bad personality. <laughs> my role here is to, uh, to be the dark, raspy, attack the uh, Scooby-Doo clan at any rate, at any speed, at any need necessary. We just attack. And now, for the home team's mascot. The lion's got the Scooby snacks. They get thrown into prehistoric times and uh, different, different situations. And of course, Velma uh, always has a lot of information at her fingertips. She knows about woolly mammoths, pterodactyls. You can go to her for any information. They get chased around by the computer virus to all these different computer worlds and they end up back in their, what they think is their town, but they end up running into their cyber alter egos. Mm -hmm. They encounter their video game clones that are actually based on the original TV series. There's two Daphnes and two Velmas and two Freddies and... Nice ascot. <laughs> Works for me. I thought it would be funny if the cyber Freddy was flirting with uh, Daphne and the real Freddy got a little mad, but they didn't like that idea. Did I really wear that years ago? That jacket with that skirt? Hmm. Now, what's funny about this whole thing is, let's face it, we're in, you know, in the year 2000. Shorts. So, you know, some of the wardrobe has changed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two Scoobies and two Shaggies. Oh, thanks a lot. We just hiked through miles of jungle and still can't find the Scooby snacks. Well, we'd better. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in this level forever. Uh, it's a long process of designing the characters. Uh, match the character types, the personalities. So how do they get into character? I play Velma, the smarty pants, with the turtleneck sweater and the glasses, which I actually wear to the session. It sort of gets me in the mood. And that's how you get into the character of Velma. You put on the turtleneck, get the glasses on, and they go, Chinkies! You're the characters in Eric's video game. And you're from the real world. Jinkies. Jinkies. Velma, give me uh, one more 447 and just underline Roman Coliseum. We don't see anything. We're just sitting at a music stand with a microphone. And you know what? Make it more of a speech, grander, bigger. Colette Sunderman directs the gang with an occasional Scooby snack. For once, I'm not in the mood for Scooby snacks. I'm their coach, their cheerleader, their number one fan. They know what they're doing. I'm just there to make sure we get the right reads. 
If they need to project, I have the picture in front of me, so I'm their eyes for the storyboard. When the dust settles, we see these uh, skeleton gladiators come out. The director, when we're just doing a few pages, can give you the setup. Uh, Daphne, as you say, it's beautiful here. You're actually just have picked a flower from the jungle and you're putting it in your hair. Okay. The easiest way for me to get exactly what sort of intonation she would have saying this place is amazing, you know, is I, I went, you know, this place is amazing. Oh, that was too close. I have an idea. Why am I straining? Am I trying to get out of ropes? Am I stuck in a tree? You know, what's going on? She's really good at just getting a great performance out of you. She's, she's got good instincts. No, that, that felt a lot better. How about to you? Now, back to the game, where there are a few surprises in this cyber chase. How's this for a heavy hitter? The Phantom Virus, uh, he's, he's probably one of the few villains that uh, you can't pull his head off. And uh, <laughs> unlike some of the other villains that uh, turn out to be people, he's really a true villain. And then there's, of course, a surprise villain at the end, which I'm not at liberty to disclose. Huh? Yikes! Surprising villains and a possible romance. Gee, why is it that you always pair off with Daphne, Fred? Uh, well, there's more relationships developing between maybe he and Daphne. We're not too sure about that, but there may be. I think they're seriously in L-O-V-E. Yeah, nobody ever talks about it, but actually this episode is, I don't want to give anything away, but it's the first kiss. Mm, that was very brave, Freddy. Oh boy. While the gang is finding romance, fending off surprising villains, and meeting their digital clones in the cyberspace, villains. the Scooby-Doo artists are back on planet Earth, busily drawing by hand. We do things the old-fashioned way because this is an old-fashioned traditional show. We like the looks of it that way. Computer animation still doesn't have the warmth that the conventional hand-drawn stuff does. Character stuff, expressions, things like that have to be done the conventional way. It is labor-intensive. And yes, it's one of the last of the handmade crafts, I guess. In this computer-generated age, it still takes an artist with amazing skill to put the life into the Scooby characters. It takes an animator to animate on a computer. The computer doesn't know anything without being told. Which is not to say there aren't any computers around the Scooby camp. Computer is uh, something that really helps us. I think it's just one more brush that we have to add to our tools to improve our work to make it be done simple and faster, but we still always will be in need of artists. The people who do it the old fashioned way, they love pushing a pencil around a piece of paper. It's the tradition of fine art and good storytelling and the promise of Scooby Snacks that keeps Scooby-Doo and the gang forever popular. That's right. Scooby is full on beautiful colors, full-on characters. I think that the stories are also, they're a little slower, they last longer. It's not so much MTV, it's kind of a nice combination of those things. The kids enjoy it because I think it's visually different. The stories are good and it's very today. Groovy! I think people like the familiarity of kind of knowing that the gang is going to solve the crime and that they're going to, you know, bumble around. And, and the characters are so great, the way they all fit together. And, um, and I'm because we grew up with it. I mean, I just know it. I know what's going to happen. It makes me feel kind of safe. <laughs> so tune in. Log on. The Scooby Gang is not safe from a phantom virus. Like coming this fall. Don't open your email because you might get a virus. Yeah, a bad phantom virus. Game over. That's the end. It's over. Roll the credits. Bye. <laughs>